Okay, since we want to respect your time, we want to keep this one to one. We appreciate you being here. Uh, this is Gio from Tricera. So, well, thank you, so, thank you so much for taking the time to to, to come over to GTC and watch our presentation. We basically. Um, Tricera has been doing business for about 15 years. Uh, we began as, you know, printing company trying to solve the Citrix issues. But over time, we have been able to expand our portfolio. And then now we not only do printing, but we do other cool stuff as well that you're going to have the opportunity to take a look at it today. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to have one of my guys back in home office to, do, to go over to the, the presentation of our products. And then uh, as we go along, if you have any questions, just please let me know. We're going to answer those questions for you. Um, and at the end, I'm going to stick around, and if you have any more questions, I'll be more than happy to see one-on-one, -on -one and, and then we'll, you know, determine what's next. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to have Travis to go ahead and start with the presentation. So, Brandon, if you can go ahead and, and switch it over to Travis. Uh, like I said, we're going to go over um, different products, and then uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, and then we'll address, some, address those as we go. Thanks, Gio. I'm um, trying to get my screen display here. Yes. Okay, okay. can everybody see my screen okay here? Yeah. All right. All right, so thanks, Gio, for the uh, warm welcome. So, Tricer, um you know, we started off a long time ago as the guys that fix printing in Citrix. So uh, I'll cover, you know, our printing portfolio as far as our offering there. And um, hang on, actually, I'm hearing my last talk. Can, uh, who's going to see the webmaster can you go? Go ahead. Um, sure. All right. Um, yeah, so first things first, I want to kind of cover our printing portfolio, how that product started, what we offer currently, and then of course where we're headed, uh, since that's our most our most popular offerings. So first things first, I just kind of want to bring everybody up to speed on the architecture of our various printing solutions. So we started off with the standalone screwdrivers product, and this product is still relevant today. The whole concept here is, you know, we want to take the printers on client workstations and route them into remote sessions and remote applications. So this is a product that's rock solid and it's valid for terminal services, uh, Citrix ZenApp, virtual desktops, VMware View, basically anywhere where you have a remote user uh, accessing resources in a data center. Um, so we support the ICA, PC over IP, and RDP protocols here. A very simple concept, you know, ultimately whatever machine the user is going to log into, we install the screwdrivers product there. That one single print driver, the screwdriver's print driver, can emulate any printer on the market. So whatever printer they happen to have on their endpoint device, we're going to route through the virtual channels available to us and present them with a printer in their remote session. So the whole concept here is we want to eliminate print drivers from that user space in the data center. So eliminate managing drivers from your virtual desktop images, your term server images, and your ZenApp images. And of course, there's a lot of stability to be had there uh, when you replace all those manufacturers driver and kind of hacky workaround type printer deployments. So that technology sort of laid the groundwork for us to further adapt printing uh, into an enterprise type solution. So if we take a look at the upper half of this diagram here, um, we've expanded the scope of screwdrivers into something called simplified printing. So when you're using our simplified printing product, you still get that screwdriver's use case of client-side printers. But simplified printing also allows us to directly support print servers in the environment. So the concept here, um, whatever machines the users are actually logging into and working on, you know, ZenApp, virtual desktops, uh, terminal servers, um, still has the screwdriver's print driver on it. So rather than connecting and emulating client-side printers, we're basically going to collect, uh, connect and emulate print server printers. So when you get this uh, solution in play, the only machine you actually install printers on is your print server. And that's also the only machine you would ever need compatible print drivers for. 
So uh, this eliminates a lot of the problems with uh, 32 and 64-bit compatibility issues. You know, if you've got environments that are rolling from XP to Win 7, be it virtual or physical, or even a lot of those environments that are just now getting around to getting out of 2003 servers, getting into 2008 and 2012, we're able to successfully virtualize any print server printer into those spaces without having to uh, scramble for drivers that are compatible. Um, Simplify printing uh, also kind of affords you the, the flexibility to print from thin and zero devices. When you've deployed the software in this model, the actual physical endpoint device that you're working from has nothing to do with the print process. It's merely just a means to access your session in the data center. So with that in mind, your, your users with iPads, thin clients, zero clients, phones, whatever, are now able to print from their remote sessions. Um, and in this model, of course, your print servers can be uh, local to the data center, or they could also be at your branch offices. If you can get print servers to the branch offices, that's great, because we actually compress print jobs from point A to point B. Um, you know, so a lot of the customer sites we go into where they've got sites all over the, uh, the continent or all over the globe uh, with limited latency there, we can compress that and kind of save some bandwidth for them. Uh, with Simplify Printing, this is a centrally managed product that is backed by a database. Um, so with from one single point of management, you can control printing across the enterprise. Very, very straightforward stuff. It's, uh, it's all drag and drop. So to take a look at kind of what that looks like, um, you know, when you're managing the print solution from our product, we integrate directly with Active Directory. So you're able to, from this central console, distribute printers and print policies across your enterprise. Um, if we look at my Active Directory here, I've got access to all my various OUs and users, security groups, machines. It's all right here. So for Triceratops, distributing printers is quite simple. You simply select the uh, user or group of users that's going to need some printers, and we're just going to drag and drop printers to them into their live configuration. So we would see every single printer and every single print server in my environment, and you simply drag and drop printers to distribute them to users. So you know, beyond this core use case of dragging and dropping printers to users, we can also achieve such things as proximity printing, you know, distributing printers to users based on where they are, based on what floor they're on, based on what machine they're on. So uh, it's very flexible to get relevant printers to the users and to their sessions. Um, also built into here, um, we've got PDF savers. We've got the ability to map and manage native print drivers. Um, so at the end of the day, any way you want to print, we can make it happen. So if there's a Windows box and a user that wants to print, we can virtualize printers into that space. So Simplify Printing would be our current enterprise print solution offering. Now, as of this year, yet again, we've evolved the technology and taken the next step, because um, now it's all about mobile devices and mobile device management. So the next thing for us, it just made sense to adapt this technology to um, iPhones, iPads, Linux-based devices, thin clients. Um, so we've basically, yet again, rolled this screwdriver's technology into what we're calling uh, Simplified Printing Torques. So the back-end infrastructure in this case is a little different, but yet again, it's gotten even simpler. Um, so we're going to have a, a very uh, standardized UI across the board. So no matter what device you're on, the UI looks the same. And you're able to um, share and map printers, much like a social network. You can subscribe to printers. You can share printers to your friends. You'll be able to print to all the enterprise print server type printers as well as local printers. And um, all this, again, is without drivers. So we're able to adapt this technology and extend the, the scope of printing directly to native iOS and Android and uh, Linux type endpoints. <clears throat> um, so that's a very, very high level overview of printing, where we're at and where we're going. Uh, before I move on to the profiles and other products, you know, I'd like to see 
what kind of questions or input you guys have and, and you know kind of what you'd like to look at deeper on printing before we move on. Sorry, there's a question here. One second. So if we're, uh, we're not an existing customer, we wouldn't uh, consider the screwdriver's product. We would just uh, look at the simple, uh, what is it, simple printing? Simplified printing, Simplify printing as the starting point. Um, if you're not an existing customer, really we like to kind of engage in discussion and see what your needs are. Um, we're still finding that even to this day, there's some people that legitimately only need screwdrivers. You know, all the only problems they have are with clients who have redirected printers. Um, so being that that technology is included in simplified printing, you know, maybe you need additional support above and beyond client side printing, then it would make sense to get into simplified printing. So where I... Again, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. So we're a, server, uh, we're a service provider, so we don't control the uh, printers at our client site. So, mm -hmm. um, and then therefore, uh, uh, would would the um, screwdrivers be the best solution for us? I mean, does that require something to be installed on the endpoint uh, to work with the server? Or yeah, yeah. So we find that for our ASP type customers, screwdrivers really make sense because at the end of the day, you don't have control over their print servers. You don't have control over their local client printers. So okay. all you're trying to do is get those printers to show up on your servers when they access uh, your resources. So in that case, yes, yeah, screwdrivers would be totally enough for you. Uh, okay. You're right. The, the screwdriver software does require a client on the back end. So on the user's local workstation, there is a screwdriver's client installed. And then there's something on the server side as well, right, I assume? Yeah, exactly. The server side has the screwdriver's software package installed, which has our print driver instead of all the native manufacturer's drivers. So does that infer that you guys are using a custom virtual channel um, to do this since you got a uh, custom client? Yes, we do use the virtual channel, and so in that regard, you know, there's no additional TCP IP connectivity required. You know, if they can connect to your data center, we're just going to ride that connection with the print data. No, I understand that, but you're not using the existing uh, printing virtual channel. You have your own virtual channel for your own printing, right? Yeah, we developed our own uh, printing channel, correct. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so we wouldn't, um, so I thought you kind of inferred that the other product is taking over. Uh, then why have two products? Then why, do you guys, why, why didn't you build the print server support well, into the screwdriver's product then? Not everyone needs print server support. So, you know, for guys like ASPs or smaller shops that don't concern themselves with print servers, screwdrivers is just enough to get the job done. And okay. then we've developed simplified printing above and beyond that to accommodate the larger environment, the enterprises, the guys that are spread out across all over, you know, the country, the world. Okay. Um, so, you know, it includes screwdrivers, but it takes you that next step. And then on the mobile device printing, uh, um, you don't, is that uh, does that does that show up as an AirPrint compatible printer or is it uh, so with iOS devices? About, when you're talking about iOS, it, it basically we're spoofing AirPrint, so we're able okay. to make any printer on the market appear as if it were an AirPrint printer. Okay. Um, and of course, for Android and, and Linux types, it's a little different. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, the printer shows up. You don't have to install it. You don't have to support drivers, and we make a print. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, probably no more questions for now, so okay, go ahead. Okay, cool. So we'll move on from printing. Um, the next stuff on my list is our scanning solution. Um, and so really, our scanning solution is, is spot on with screwdrivers printing. So the whole concept behind our scanning solution is you want to take a scanner that's connected to a physical endpoint and redirect that into a remote session, be it virtual desktop, terminal services, or Citrix Zen app. So on your uh, remote machine, you've got our virtual scan data source. And that's going to emulate whatever scanner it happens to be on the other end on the client side. So again, we get the virtual channels. We get compression of the data. Um, and you don't have to worry about supporting various drivers on your servers or your virtual desktop images. So it's, it's a very simple solution, no database back end. It's one of those things, you next, 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 install and now your guys can scan without having to install scan drivers. Um, so that's the scanning stuff. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Does anybody have any uh, you know, quick questions on the scanning side of things? No questions. Okay, cool. Um, 
So the big thing uh, next is going to be simplify profiles. Um, so when we talk about profiles from the Tricera perspective, actually I have a better diagram here. Um, at the end of the day, Simplify Profiles is aiming to replace roaming profiles. Those pesky Windows roaming profiles that bloat and corrupt and they're problematic. The way that we approach profiles is sometimes referred to as a hybrid profile. So the, the actual user profile we want the users to hook into on the Windows side is going to be a mandatory profile. Um, so if anyone's familiar with those, that's going to be a lockdown, read-only user profile. So right out of the gate, that profile never writes back to the profile store. It never bloats. It never corrupts. Um, so it's rock solid. The typical downfall of a mandatory profile is the users can't customize it, right? Whatever they do gets blown away at the end of their session. And that's where the Tricera Simplify Profile software steps in. So Simplify Profiles essentially is going to act as a layer on top of the mandatory profile to reapply the user's customizations in their, their settings and their files and their folders. Um, and so by, by kind of separating the profile content from Windows, we're able to reapply it much faster. So you get rid of those long login and performance type issues. And then uh, being that it's a mandatory profile on the back end, it's much more stable. It doesn't corrupt. It doesn't bloat. So the architecture is very straightforward. So uh, whatever machine it is that the users are ultimately logging into, be it a desktop or um, terminal server type setup, you have Simplify Profiles software installed. Um, outside of that, the only components would be the SQL database on the back end. Uh, this is the same SQL database that we use for Simplify Printing. So it's all kind of in one spot. And um, that database really just houses the general configuration of the product, as well as the user's registry content, the HK current user's profile data. Outside of that, we would leverage any existing infrastructure in the environment as far as file servers. So on your file server, we're going to host that mandatory profile, as well as use that to point folder redirection to and any files that we want to manipulate in the user profile. So in most cases, we're able to layer this solution on top of the user's existing environment without having to add additional infrastructure or resources. There's no management server or middleman server that handles the content. We just lay it right on top of the user space that's already there. Um, so when we talk about profiles, there's a few things to take into consideration. Um, content is stored in a number of different locations in a user profile, right? There's registry data, there's files and folders, there's app data. It's kind of spread out across the board there. Um, so once the users are hooked into that mandatory profile, that template profile, the next steps in Simplify Profiles is to administratively determine what you want to actually follow the users around. Um, so the first thing you would do is determine what profile registry content do I need to follow the users around, right? So a quick and dirty example. Microsoft Office. You know, everyone uses Office. It's pretty straightforward stuff. And I want my users to be able to customize it. And, you know, they pick special fonts and colors and they move the buttons around. Whatever. I want that to follow them around. So what we've done is I've, I've created a new object here. And I've basically browsed the HP current users registry. And I'm figuring out, hey, where's that content stored? At which point I define a save and restore policy here and then drag and drop this to the users that need it. Maybe it's this entire OU. That's already in there. Um, so what does that mean? What is our software doing here? The users, they log in. The mandatory profile is loaded for them. And then the Tristerate software is really just going to keep track of these reg keys. So at the end of the session, when they log off, we capture this data, store it in SQL. Next time they log in, we reapply that data right on top of the mandatory profile, just the way they left it. So, I mean, that's a pretty simple example, um, but if you take that concept, you can apply that to any application or application set, uh, or even operating system type customization. So, you get to kind of pick and choose what it is that specifically follows the user around. We like this approach because it's kind of the opposite of roaming profiles, right? Roaming profiles just say, hey, let's take everything, let's bloat this profile and have it follow the user we kind of dial it back a notch and say, let's pick out what they actually need 
and have that follow them around. And that gets you that more reliable um, and faster performance out of a, out of a profile. Um, and of course, outside of saving and restoring and letting the users persist data, we can also administratively define reg content for the users as well. So if there are certain values that you just want to push out to the users, um, I can go ahead and set these values, define what I want it to be, and inject that into the user's profile administratively. Um, so you, know, you can set Internet Explorer home pages, you can set security settings, whatever you want to do that's in the registry, we can push it out to them. Um, outside of the reg content, the majority of the remaining profile data is going to be things like app data, documents, favorites, desktop. Uh, we cover that through folder redirection. Um, you know, you could do this through group policy. I think we make it a little easier. Just checkbox the folders you want to redirect, tell us where you want to send it, and we'll drag and drop and apply it to the users that need that policy. Um, so it's, again, it's that whole drag and drop type functionality. Um, so yeah, I mean, centralize the data to the file server, keep it secure, and the users don't have to download it every time they log in. Um, you know, that's the downfall of roaming profiles. So get the performance back. <clears throat> the other scenario for user profiles is, you know, there's these outlier files, right? Maybe there's some content that is not directly covered by folder redirection and it's not registry based. So we have something called file operations. So long story short, this is a way to um, manipulate other files and folders directly into the user profile. Um, so you can basically target a file in the network um, and then drop it in the user profile when they log in. When they log off, we'll copy it back. So long story short, if there's something in a user profile that you want to follow them around day to day, session to session, this software can target, target that through one of those three mechanisms. Uh, and that's going to give you that core experience of persistent user profiles. Um, as well as fast login times. Outside of that, the profile software has additional kind of bells and whistle type features that are really aimed at just kind of improving the administrative experience as well as, uh, again, getting you some perceived performance gains on the user side. So things like um, Windows Explorer restrictions. You know, you want to lock down Windows Explorer, just checkbox the items you want to secure and drag and drop. Uh, environment variables, if you have any application sets that require custom environment variables to be pushed down when the user logs in, create those here, drag and drop. Um, drive restrictions, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, and again, drive mapping is also straightforward. Pick a letter, tell us where you want to send it, and we'll map drives into the user session. So a lot of this is, are things that you can typically do with group policies or scripts. What we've seen in practice in the field is that we process these events much faster. So the time it takes group policy to resolve these assignments versus scripts um, is significantly longer than what we do. So again, this is all about delivering that, that fast login and the high performance profile uh, experience to the users. And then the last Simplify Profiles bell and whistle in here is ADMX template support. So. Again, there's a, little, a lot of overlap here with things you can do with group policy, but we're going to process faster. So configure some ADM, ADMX templates through here and um, control your user and computer policies. So as far as profiles goes, um, you know, the, the most customers we get are going to be Citrix, you know, terminal services type customers. However, this software is usable on any Windows type environment. So physical desktops, virtual desktops, server-based computers, doesn't matter to us. If there's a Windows box and the user wants to log in, we can uh, control the profile content. Um, so that's a high-level overview of that. Profiles questions at this point? Hold on, John. Just one question. Yeah, yeah. That'll be more than one. <laughs> Hi, uh, it's me again. Um, so, if you have, but if you have users that have laptops or desktops or a terminal session or Citrix session, uh, does it account for all that? Does it uh, is it smart enough to know uh, different operating systems and different devices for that? You know, if it's a user-centric uh, thing, you want to apply. 
Yeah, so with, with this profile solution, we can inject the profile content to V1 or V2 profiles. So actually, we kind of bridge the gap in that regard. Um, so a lot of people that are coming to us migrating from XP to 7, we can help them migrate V1 profile content into a user's V2 profile. Uh, above and beyond that, you know, it's just a matter of kind of configuring where you want the various policies to apply. So, you know, I can configure these options to follow the users based on Active Directory, or I can target specific machines. You know, if I only want certain profile content to show up when they hit a specific server or a specific machine, I would apply it to that machine versus the user. Um, and, if, and, and with all of our configurations, we can get extremely granular as far as blocking inheritance, blocking server or machine type assignment, uh, or even straight blocking owner assignment. So it's possible to get very granular right down to the user or machine level as, as far as where the settings take place. And the offline user is like a laptop. How do, uh, how do you deal with that? Uh, what happens when they sign in and they're not connected to the network? How does it? Does it queue up yeah. stuff? Yeah, so we do have an off mode. Um, it relies on a cache. So if the user is logged in while they're on the network at least once, we can cache that and let them then access the profile while they're also offline. OK. And the, AD, the ADM stuff, did you imply that uh, if we have an ADM template, uh, X template, we can import that in so we can then configure that app? Uh, um, settings. Yeah, exactly. Here. So, like, if you if you've added in the Office 2010 ADMX set into your uh, template store, this software will pick up on that and let you manipulate those templates as well. Okay. And I've seen presentations from uh, AppSense and uh, Res. Um, what's the elevator pitch on how your product is different than those products? Because they all kind of sound that they do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, they do all kind of do the same thing at the end of the day. Um, I like to think that ours is a little simpler than, say, for example, AppSense. You know, they've got that whole management server and the, the personalization server and all that, all these moving parts. We don't require any additional infrastructure. So throw this on top of the existing user space, a couple drag and drop configurations, and your persistent profile content. The, the way I like to present it is, like, we do about, those are great tools, by the way, mm -hmm. as for AppSense. Uh, we do about 80% of what those tools can do at a mm -hmm. fraction of the cost. We don't do okay. everything. I would say about 80%. <clears throat> okay. That's the best way to present it. Okay. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay, Travis. <clears throat> All right, so next on the list. Is Hold on one second, Travis. Sorry? Hold on one second. One more question. I was just yes. curious about the, the licensing, you know, how it worked, your concurrent user device. I mean, what does that look like, your structure? For the profile solution? Uh, for that or printing, whatever. Um, Maybe you have one so, model. Yeah, the, the Simplify branded products, a.k.a. printing profiles, anything in this management console, uh, is typically licensed uh, per server. So if we're talking about terminal services or Citrix NAP, we license each terminal server node, and it's unlimited users, unlimited printers, unlimited print servers. So as many people as you can fit on that server are covered by that license. Now, when you apply these products to desktops, physical or virtual, we get into what you call a concurrent license model. Um, so maybe you've got a thousand desktops in the enterprise, but there's only 300 in use at a given time we would set up a pool of 300 concurrent licenses, and they just get passed around as a machine is actually in use. Um, so basically, it's kind of like per machine. Third question. OK. <clears throat> Moving on, Fox. Okay. Um, so the last couple things we want to talk about are the lockdown and desktop features of Simplify Suite. Um, so these are two products that can be run independently of one another, but we find that they complement each other very well. Simplify Desktop is our custom desktop solution. So the whole idea is when the users hit the Zen app desktop or the virtual desktop or even physical desktops, 
we kind of want to lock down and restrict what it is that they're actually going to see on that desktop session. So we replace the traditional Windows Explorer shell with our Tri shell. Now, this looks and feels just like Windows. I mean, it's a start, log off, clock, everything's right there where you'd expect it to be. But we provide nothing else in the shell. So when you first create this, um, the user would log in, they get a start button, a log off button, and that's it. So we get to create what the shell looks and feels like as far as, you know, colors and themes, wallpapers, you know, do I let the users store things on the desktop, you know, the basic behaviors of the shell, um, what shows up on the start menu, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we then apply that to a user or a group of users, the whole domain, whoever you want to apply it to, by dragging and dropping it. So at this point, if all you've done is create the shell, like I said, you log in and there's nothing there. You can hit start and log back off and that's all you can do. So what the desktop tool allows us to do is drag and drop applications to the users that need them. So in my control panel here, I've got a list of applications uh, available and I would simply drag and drop them to the location I want them to show up. So I can populate applications to the desktop, to the quick launch, to the start menu, etc. Uh, and actually, I'll tell you what, let's log in with the user and, and see what it does. Um, so it's a really easy, quick way to just to kind of manage desktops. And um, you know, for those environments where you don't want users kind of uh, logging in and doing things they shouldn't be, it's a good way to hide those applications from them. All right, so you're logged in, and like I said, it looks and feels just like Windows always has, you know, start buttons, log off buttons, clocks, um, but it's, it's pretty slimmed down. You'll notice basically all you're seeing are the things that I've pushed out to the user's desktop. What I do like about this is you can update this on the fly. So if a user calls in and says, you know what, today I need a different application on my desktop, um, we can go ahead and drag and drop that and update it on the fly. So this user that I logged in with, they called up and said, you know what, I want Internet Explorer on my desktop. So I drag and drop that over, and I can have the user right-click and refresh their desktop, and then boom, they've got the additional application there that we wanted them to have. So it's a quick and easy way just to push out apps and icons to the user sessions without having to have them log off and on and all that sort of nonsense. And again, this is going to be the only application sets they see. So, you know, in my opinion, that's the first step in creating a secure desktop environment, right? Taking away the big red button that you don't want them to hit. So, that's kind of simplified desktop. Now, if you've got some tech-savvy users, sure, they might be able to circumvent those measures, find the applications or executables that you've hidden from them and run them. And that's where lockdown, simplified lockdown, complements simplified desktop. So this is a tool that allows us to basically create a whitelist or blacklist of application sets in the environment. So your trusted list would be your whitelist, the most secure, and basically just says, hey, you know, the users can only run the apps on this list and nothing else. So anything else they, they try and run, we're going to immediately restrict access to, throw an error message, and uh, log that for the admins to review later. Now, the application restrictions are based on hash values. So, you know, it's not as simple as, you know, bringing in Minesweeper on a thumb drive and renaming it to Microsoft Word and running it. I mean, we do actively check these hash values to authenticate the app launch events. <clears throat> so, trusted list, again, would be your most secure. It's your white list. The alternative is the ban list. You know, it just says, hey, you can't run this one application but whatever else you want to do, that's fine. So you can kind of pick and choose which one might work for you depending on uh, the needs in the environment. Um, so that is desktop and lockdown. So again, they, I think they go hand in hand, but we do have customers that run them, you know, one without the other, either way. So, you know, it depends on what your needs are. Um, questions on desktop and lockdown? Questions? Can 
we, we can go, go on to the next one, Travis. There, there was no questions. Oh, I, th I thought you said somebody had a question. Um, actually, Gio, that's, that's everything I had on the list from you as far as what you want to talk about today. Was there some stuff you wanted to go more in depth on or uh, cover people's use cases or stuff like that? Uh, will it help to have something about printing into more details? Um, he's actually uh, spoken to my boss is not here. He, he, had, he had spoken to somebody with me a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and we just uh, we we're having some printing issues with some of our customers. And uh, I forgot who that was. I don't, I don't have that contact information, but uh, it's uh, that project's on hold right now to to address the printing issue because the client's not complaining that much. So um, we'll have to revisit that when that happens. But on the uh, on the uh, on the other products, um, does it require any um, on, our, on our corporate network? Uh, uh, we don't manage Active Directory. Does it require any schema extensions on any or any other products to work, or, uh, or just uses uh, native act you know basic Active Directory integration using groups? Yeah, I mean, we will connect with and detect your existing Active Directory infrastructure. So when we come into a new environment, there's no modifications needed to your existing AD to accommodate our product. We're basically just going to query what's already there, and then you can start dishing out assignments and policies based on your current AD structure. And these, uh, the, uh, for the desktop, uh, can you, uh, based on group assignments, uh, determine what desktop they get? Is that how, it, is that how you sign out the desktops? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with any of the modules and any policy or configuration available in our product, we can associate those those assignments to any Active Directory group. So it can be made to the entire domain. You can make configurations to OUs, individual users, security groups. Um, you can make assignments directly to specific machines. So any Active Directory object can be leveraged to apply a policy. And what about things like disabling the USB or you know CD-ROM? Do you guys also have that built in capability built in? Uh, no, we don't mess with disabling USB and CD drives stuff, stuff like that. Is that on the roadmap? Um, that that seems to be a big thing with security. You know, um, data loss prevention. Um, not on the roadmap necessarily for this product line. We do have some other security type stuff, you know, so we have the application lockdown. That's the biggest thing for us on security. Um, we do have a secure clipboard product, so we developed this for a healthcare customer where basically they want users to be able to copy and paste within their, their session on the term server, but they don't want them to be able to take that content down to the local machine, so basically you can't copy patient records to your client machine. So we have created a secure clipboard product in that regard as far as data loss prevention, but we don't mess with securing the USB or CD-ROM or other local drives. And on the uh, on the application uh, controls, like uh, when I see with AppSense, do you have the ability to control what menu items the user can uh, use on that uh, within an application? No, we're strictly restricting access. So you can permit or deny access to the application as a whole. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any any questions? No questions. No more questions at this point, Travis. So thank um, it was a great presentation. So um, yeah, maybe I went a little fast there, but um, yeah, I think we covered everything you wanted uh, in your scope. Um, yeah, so Gio, I guess if, if anybody else has additional questions afterwards, you know, feel free to engage me and uh, we can cover it. We'll do. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, so are we done with me for now? I guess. Yeah, I mean, unless there's any. No questions at this time, so you're free to go. <laughs> thanks. All right. All right. Thanks for your time, guys. Have a good one.